Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful Romberg Fields musical hit Up in Central Park. Starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Mimi Benzel. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another memorable musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Tonight, the American Railroads salute the Girl Scouts, a growing force for freedom. The Girl Scouts of the USA are 41 years old this week. Close to 2 million American girls and their leaders are now part of this important program, building good citizens and molding happy, useful people. Happy birthday, Girl Scouts everywhere. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're going back to New York of 1870, when they were just digging and planting Central Park. It's the big backyard of the city. It's a great pool along with a tree. And a dark green lake you can row on for a small and modest fee. You can view New York from a hilltop, every side street and boulevard. It's great to live in the town between the rivers near that big backyard. For everyone, plenty of air and places in the sun. Plenty of time to rest when work is done. Get on your mark, here we go, Central Park. It's the big backyard of the city. It's a great cool lawn with a tree. And a dark green place you can go on for a small and modest tea. You can do New York from a hilltop. Every side street and boulevard It's great to live in the town Between the rivers near that big backyard It's always great to live in the town Between the rivers near that big backyard All right, time for lunch up to digging. Now, where's that daughter of mine with me lunch basket? Rosie? Oh, coming, Peter. Peter? Now, I've had just about enough of your elegant manners. You ain't a Vanderbilt, Rosie. You're just a plain moor. Yes, Papa. Now for me lunch. But what in the devil is this, the size of a silver dollar? It's a sandwich, Papa. Just the way the ladies and gentlemen eat them at Delmonico. What's inside of this? Watercress. Watercress me I It is grass. Now, you listen to me, Lady Astor. I've had just about enough of your dreams of social climbing. Now I'll have to go over and get myself some corned beef and cabbage so that I can continue my work on Central Park. Oh, dear, what am I going to do with Papa? Excuse me. Oh, hello. I'm looking for Mr. Timothy Moore. Oh, well, Mr. Moore is engaged right now at luncheonette. But can I help you? I'm his daughter, Rosie. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you, Miss Moore. My name is John Matthews. I'm a newspaper man, and I want to get a story about your father and how the work is progressing on the park. A newspaper man? Mm-hmm. Oh, if you put Papa's picture in the paper, it would certainly help my career. Oh? Have you a career? Well, I'm trying to get one. And when I do, I'll let you write about it in your newspaper. Rosie Moore, daughter of the famous park builder Timothy Moore, will do her repertory of songs at the concert in Central Park tonight. I can just see you on the platform, Miss Rosie, looking very beautiful with your father's park all around you. Oh, dear. I think I'm, I'm going to be a little nervous. With all your experience? Oh, no. Sing, Rosie. Nearby, 
Central Park is finished, there's going to be a carousel. Right about here. And a bandstand. Where you can stand up and sing, just the way you did. Well, maybe someday I'll be a prima donna. Well, someday when I get fat enough. Oh, you don't have to get fat. You just have to study. Now, there's a fine conservatory in Boston. Would they teach me to sing, to sing like Jenny Lind? Oh, better than Jenny Lind. <laughs> and you'd be so beautiful, every man in New York would fall in love with you. You too? Oh, I'd be the first. Oh, but Boston's so far away. Well, I'd come up and visit you. And you could come home at Christmas time. Would you meet me here in the park? Oh, it'll be our special meeting place. Oh, it's a lovely dream. But I don't think I can afford it. Well, I can't afford my dreams. But I wouldn't do without them. It doesn't cost you anything to do. By the world at night The price is always right At night You're wealthy You're attractive You're supreme The sun and moon are cheap As long as you're asleep They're cheap Awake, your arms are empty Asleep, your lips have met Unless you have insomnia There's no one you can't get It doesn't cost you anything to dream A dream will always be only thing that's free for you, for me. I've got to try that. You mean you just close your eyes? That's like right. This, and you wish? Mm hmm. For anything in the whole world you want. It doesn't cost you anything to dream. That's right. You buy the world at night The price is always right At night You're wealthy You're attractive You're supreme The sun and moon are cheap As long as you're asleep They're cheap Awake your eyes Asleep, your lips have met. Unless you have insomnia, there's no one you can't get. It doesn't cost you anything to dream. A dream will always be the 
Did you sing well? Well, I sang, John. But the man said he just couldn't make me into Jenny Lind. <laughs> oh, Rosie, I love you. I love you too, John. Would you marry me, Rosie? Sometime. But I've got big dreams now. I want to capsize the stars. Well, do anything you like, but just stay close to me, my sweet. How close? Oh, just like this. as pages in a book, my love and I. So close we can share a single look, share every thought. So close that before I hear your laugh, my love. Tumbling to the ground, we'll hold them fast. Darling, as the strongest book is bound, we're bound to going back to Boston. I have a job. Mr. Peters, he's, he's very rich. He wants me to sing at the new Central Park Garden. Rosie, you can't. I don't think you're ready. You can't hold me back, John. Why, Mr. Peters said in Boston that he'd get me new gowns and jewels and... And you accept it? Why, of course. What girl wouldn't? What, John, what's the matter? Uh, nothing. Nothing, Rosie. In my book, somebody just rip the pages apart. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present as the opening attraction of the Central Park Gardens the singing debut of the lovely Rosie Moore. Thank you all. Here's a little number that I hope you'll all like. The fireman fry, the fireman fry, won't sit home by the fireside from all the town. Stop, Stop Rosie. Why, how dare you interrupt my song? Isn't it bad enough you made a fool out of me, Rosie? Don't make a fool out of yourself, too. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Matthews. But since my song has been interrupted, I think it's a good time to make an announcement. My sponsor and benefactor, Mr. Peters, has asked me to marry him, and I want to make this public announcement. I accept him. <laughs>
We'll be back in just a moment for Act Two of Up in Central Park. Next time your wife comes home from shopping, take a good look at her shopping bag. You may see the makings for a variety of delicious meals or maybe an assortment of things for the house or clothes for the children. But one thing you won't see is what makes possible everything in that shopping bag. Transportation and lots of it. For the fact is, your ability to buy most everything you need from your local merchants would not be possible without your old friend, the railroad freight car. You see, it takes a mighty job of high-volume, low-cost transportation to bring together the widely scattered products of forest, farm, mine, and mill that together make up the scores of items you bring home from market each week. And that's a job for America's railroads. In fact, more than 600 trains will start on their journeys somewhere in the United States during the 30 minutes we're on the air tonight, while another 600 will complete their runs and pull into their terminals. And during this half hour and every half hour, America's freight trains will do a job equal to hauling more than a million tons of freight a mile every minute. Thanks to this big job of transportation, you and all of us are able to enjoy not only the necessities, but so many of the luxuries that flow from America's unparalleled mass production system. For only the railroads, with the tremendous capacity and high efficiency made possible by trains of cars on tracks of steel, can provide the kind of dependable, low-cost, mass transportation needed by our mass production system. That's why it is that in a very real sense, America can be said to live out of the familiar railroad freight car. Here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Up in Central Park, starring Gordon McRae as John Matthews and Mimi Benzel as Rosie Moore. It's the big backyard of the city. It's a great cool lawn with a tree. And a dark green lake you can row on for a small and modest sea. There it is, me boy, Central Park. All done. A big backyard for the biggest city in the USA. Yeah, Mr. Moore, it's, it's wonderful. But I'll tell you this now, it's no park to go walking in alone. Every fella's got to have a girl, and every girl's got to have a fella. Yeah, you can say that again. You miss her, don't you? Rosie. Well, this is the place we met, this park. What happens to you when you see her? That's the real test. What happens? Why, she walks into a room and the whole place comes to life, turns sideways and upside down. Oh, what happens? The air seems fresh, the lights glow bright, the walls are charged with dynamite. The artificial flowers bloom when she walks in the room. The statues nod, the curtains wave, the big stuffed elf becomes her slave. The silent clock begins to boom when she walks in the room. The family album opens and relatives galore. Look up and smile like angels, they never smiled before. And there she'll be, so young and sweet, my heart starts kneeling at her feet. My world begins to soar and zoom when she walks in the room. The goldfish grin, the lovebirds squeal, the old wax fruit tastes almost real. They lose that old familiar room when she walks in the room. The mustache cup recites a poem, the sampler sings, God bless our home. The dustpan dances with a broom when she walks in. That group of college classmates looks down and starts to droom. They can't see how she passed me. I never passed at school. But there she'll be so sweet and cool while I stand waiting like a fool to meet my sweet and lovely doom when she walks in the room. John, me boy, there's no room in Central Park for her to walk into. But if you look down that gravel walk... Oh, Mr. Moore, 
I'll bet you arranged the whole thing. Well, I'm not saying I did, and I'm not saying I didn't. Right now, I'm arranging to disappear. Well, I declare, I do believe it's John. John Matthews. Hello, Rosie. You're looking very beautiful. Thank you. Did you know I'm all the rage in New York? Oh, yes, yes, I know. Myra's waiting at the stage door, your dressing room full of flowers. You must be a very happy young lady. Oh, I am. I am. Well, that's all that matters, I suppose. Are you still going to marry Mr. Peters? Yes, the date's all set. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about us. Us? I've thought about you many times. You yeah. have? I wondered what you've been doing. Whether you've made any new acquaintances or friends. Oh, or... no, no, I haven't made any new friends. I stay very much the same. My feelings don't change. There's a love as swift and light as an April snow. It's a shining gift a bright bit of touch and go. It's a love you dare not crush in your arms A moment the charms of gold Then it quickly flies away Like an April snow story, please. Dateline, New York. Signed article, John Matthews, reporter. Evidence was uncovered today by this correspondent that Arthur Peters, operator of the Central Park Gardens, has embezzled funds in the amount of $100,000 from the city treasury. Mr. Peters is a fiance to the young singing star, Rosie Moore. No, strike out that last sentence, please. <laughs> Mr. Moore, where is she? Where's Rose? Gone away, John. It's my fault. If I hadn't published that article, why... Well, you had your job to do and you'd done it. But where could she have gone? I've looked everywhere. Have you now? Have you tried Boston? Boston? Said she was going back to some sort of conservatory place. Wants another try at being another Jenny Lind. Oh, I'm going to grab the first train. Ah, there's no need to. School's all finished. She's coming home today. And you know, I've got a sort of a hunch you'll be able to find her right there in the backyard. What backyard? My backyard. Your backyard. New York's backyard. Rosie. Oh, Rosie. Hello, John. Look, it's just the way you said it would be. There's a carousel. A beautiful carousel. Oh, Rosie, welcome home. Now, come here, will you, where you belong? Where's that, John? Close. How close, John? Let me show you. Our dreams walk from tumbling to the ground. We'll hold them
you, ladies and gentlemen. Mimi Benzel will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Arthur Q. Bryan, who played Timothy Moore, and our entire company. Up in Central Park, with book and lyrics by Herbert and Dorothy Fields, and music by Sigmund Romberg, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Marvin? This year, the Red Cross must expand its services to meet a greatly increased number of calls for help. And these calls can be answered only if every American realizes that he is the Red Cross and that his neighbors next door, in the next town, and across the nation depend on his contribution to help meet emergencies. When you help the Red Cross, you are assisting our men and women in uniform. You are contributing to the growth of the vital Red Cross blood program. You are aiding the victims of disaster and helping restore them to normal living. To meet increased needs in all these areas, the Red Cross depends on each of us to answer the call of the 1953 Red Cross Fund Drive. Thank you, Marvin. And now, folks, here again is our charming guest, Mimi Benzel. in the park with you, Gordon. Well, we loved it too, Mimi. What's on the show train next Monday? Will you listen? Sounds like Eileen. Mm, you're so right, Mimi. It's a great day for the Irish, and it's one of my favorite shows. Lucille Long will be here for our special St. Patrick's Day program. Victor Herbert's Eileen. Well, we'll all be a listening, and good night, Gordon. Good night, Mimi. You are wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so on until next Monday night. And Eileen, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. Gordon McRae can soon be seen starring in the Technicolor production, The Desert Song. Our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon, and our choir was under the direction of Norman Lubo. This is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Transcribed. Stay tuned now for the Pacific Telephone Hour on NBC.